Today we're going to look at carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates only come from plant foods, so from things that grow. And we're initially going to look at the process of photosynthesis. How do the plants make energy? So if you we're looking at the first page of your carbohydrate notes, and you'll see that photosynthesis is the process by which green plants use sunlight to make glucose. And glucose is a sugar. They make that from water and from carbon dioxide. So the roots of the plant absorb the water from the soil. The leaves take in carbon dioxide from the air. And chlorophyll, which is the green pigment, the colour in plants, um, absorbs the light energy from the sun. And as a result, you'll see we have our carbon dioxide, our water, our light energy and chlorophyll from the plants. And the plants produce glucose and oxygen from that. So we use the glucose part as the energy from our carbohydrate foods, but the oxygen that they release back into the atmosphere is really good for the environment. So the good news is you don't have to learn this chemical formula. You just need to be able to describe how plants make their food uh, from the carbon dioxide, the water, light, energy, and chlorophyll, and that the result is glucose and oxygen. So if we're looking at the elemental composition of carbohydrates, so carbohydrates contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So three elements. And the classification, how we divide them, you would have looked at plant and animal and sugar starch and fibre for junior search. For leaving search, we divide them according to structure. So they're classified according to monosaccharides, mono meaning one. So this is one simple unit. And this, in its most basic form, is how carbohydrates can be absorbed into the body. Disaccharides, di meaning two. So this is like a double unit, two joined together. And then long chains, sometimes called complex carbohydrates. So these can be any length, very long. And we're going to look at um, the structure of that in a minute. So I'm going to bring you over to the next board where we're looking at the RDA. So for carbohydrates, it's approximately 50% of food intake. The energy value, so one gram of carbohydrate equals four calories of energy. Now, I'm going to bring you down to what we call the glucose ring here. This is the structure of a monosaccharide. So, above these headings. So this is called the structure of monosaccharide. But it's also known as the glucose ring. And the formula for the glucose ring, and I'll explain where we get the formula from in a minute, is C6. H12O6. So I would ask you at this point to pause the video and to copy down that diagram. You need to practice drawing it. It will be a requirement if carbohydrates come up. So to show you where we came up with the formula, let's start counting. So we're going to count our carbons first. So let's start with the inner ring. One, two, three, four, five, and another one here, six. This gives us our C6, six carbons. Then we count the hydrogens. So if we see here, we have H2. So that's two hydrogens. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that's where you get your H12. And then you can repeat the process for oxygen. You have six oxygens. This is where you get the formula. C6H12O6. Now we need this, so this represents 
the structure of a monosaccharide. So we need to draw this again. You can copy along with me. So I'm just going to copy this exactly on the other side of the board. Personally, I find it easiest to do the inside part first, but it's up to yourself. Because what we're going to show next is the formation of a disaccharide. So I'm doing it in a different colour just for emphasis. Exactly the same diagram, so we now have two monosaccharides. So what we're going to show is the formation of a disaccharide. And exactly the same as we did when we looked at protein, the formation of a disaccharide involves the removal of a molecule of water to join these two monosaccharides together. So where are we going to take? We need to take two H's and one O away to make H2O. So we're going to take the OH here and the H here. So we're just going to circle around these and this is the removal of H2O. So this brings us to the chemical formula for carbon for disaccharides. So monosaccharides are C6H12O6. Now we've joined two together, so you might think we double this. We make C12H24O6. But we have to remember we've removed H2O. So we've removed two hydrogens and one oxygen. So our chemical formula for disaccharides is going to be C12. We didn't take away any carbons. It's going to be h 10, or H22 because we removed two hydrogens and it's going to be O11 because we removed one oxygen. So if we were to look at the formation of a polysaccharide and the good news for polysaccharides is you don't have to keep drawing these chemical formulas, you are, it's acceptable to do a much simpler version for the formation of polysaccharides. So, so what's acceptable as a diagram for polysaccharides is to draw it like this. the removal of H2O so that you show that you understand each time an monosaccharide is removed, one molecule of water is also removed. And when we get to the digestion of carbohydrates, we will be reversing this. So we've removed a molecule of water to join each of these single monosaccharides together. In digestion, we'd be hydrolyzing, we'd be hydrolysis, we'd be forcing the water back in to split these apart. Okay, so move, we're, I just draw your attention to the first page of your, carb, of your notes on carbohydrates. So the elemental composition, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Um, and the classification, monosaccharides, single units. Disaccharide, double units, polysaccharide, many in a long chain. So, if we're going to look at the monosaccharides, I'm going to bring you over to the next board here, and we're looking at the chemical formula, the C6H12O6. We counted those on our glucose ring. And our examples are glucose. You'll find glucose in energy drinks. Monosaccharides, because they're single units, do not need to be broken down. They don't need to be digested. They're absorbed straight into the bloodstream. So this is why if you consume an energy drink, you get this direct hit of energy, but it doesn't last. It dissipates very quickly. Fructose 
also single unit monosaccharide, we find this in fruit. And not all carbohydrates are sweet, but fructose is the sweetest of them all. It's naturally occurring sweetness, and we find fructose in fruit. And our last monosaccharide is galactose. This is one of the sugars that's found in milk. It's a component part of lactose, the sugar in milk. So moving, and again, you need to be able to draw your uh, glucose ring for monosaccharides. So disaccharides, you need to show the formation of a disaccharide if that question comes up. So our disaccharide formula, C12, H22, O11, because we removed H2O. And our example is sucrose, which is table sugar, the sugar you put in your tea, coffee. This is made up of a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule. And that's why it tastes sweet, because it contains fructose. Lactose, which is the sugar in milk, is made up of one glucose molecule and one galactose molecule. And galactose is not very sweet, so that's why milk doesn't have a terribly sweet taste. And maltose, which is found in grains, and that's made up of glucose and glucose, so two glucose molecules here. So moving on to the formulation for our polysaccharides. We have the formula C6H10O11, because every, drawing you back to this diagram here, every time we join a monosaccharide together in a polysaccharide chain, we remove a molecule of water. We have this formula in brackets, because we don't know the length of this chain. Right, and you're not required to know the length of the chain. So to the power of n is because we don't know how long this chain of polysaccharide is. So our examples of polysaccharide are starch, which is not sweet. So you will find starch in potatoes, in pasta, root vegetables that grow in the ground like turnips, um, carrots, and so on. Cellulose, and we'll come back to talk about cellulose that has quite a lot of names later, but this is the skin and cell walls of all plant foods. Pectin, which is found in fruit, and pectin has a role in setting jam. And glycogen, which is our emergency store of energy, is stored in the liver and in the muscle, and glycogen is released when adrenaline is released. So adrenaline is a hormone that is released, it's called the fight or flight hormone, so it's released when you are either under threat and you want to stand and fight, or flight and you're going to run away because you're under threat. And in that scenario, your body releases this emergency reserve of energy so that you can fight or you can run away. 